Well, I'm finally ready to get back to work on the airplane. Had a kind of a five months hiatus on it. Uh, worked on it pretty good through the winter last year, and spring, into the summer. Things slowed down when I started working for the summer and then I just kind of had to quit on it. I had too many other things come up that uh, needed attention that I've been neglecting. Got the cover built for the cistern and so we drained it and cleaned it out and put the cover on it. I started uh, doing some fill for putting in a cabin for my son. Then I just had maintenance that had been deferred on the, my uh, vehicles. My pickup needed oil change and needed maintenance on it. And I had uh, equipment that I needed to uh, do maintenance on, uh, oil changes and stuff, the skid steer Bobcat and then it had a fuel flow problem I had to fix it. The sawmill needed maintenance. We got the uh, hydraulic valves overhauled on it. it started on the carburetor and, and uh, the guide rollers, and but then the weather just got too bad uh, outside. I had to quit on that. I've got a bunch of machine tools that I keep stored in the hangar. I've got a planer and a jointer and table saw and, and some other stuff there. And in the winter time, when it gets cold, the frost condenses onto the metal parts there, bare surfaces in particular, and then when it warms up a little bit that's uh, just raw water on there. And I think the frost scratches the protective grease on them and so the water can get in underneath that and it creates havoc with the rust. And so I had to do something with those and it just seemed like things just kept piling on and we, we got snow and I had to plow snow and then it uh, froze and we had to deal with ice. Water tank froze up and we got it working and then the drain lines froze up it's just uh, one thing after another and we got such a pile of crap in here I mean uh, piles of supplies and and parts in here got piled up to where I just constantly had to move things around to find something and to work on it so I needed to reorganize this basement in here to so we've built some shelves over here some hanging shelves on the wall and I've got a lot of the stuff organized and put up there out of the way so I don't have to paw through everything and move through everything so you have a little better organized workplace. So we've got that done, got the shop cleaned out, ready to start working. Now the last thing that I was doing, I was working on the fuel lines. I got those pretty much all laid out. Uh, the last thing that I need to do on these is put beads on them. Um, they come out and then here where they terminate on, on here. And there's a rubber fuel line that slips over these aluminum fuel lines and uh, so I want a bead in this uh, fuel line here for that rubber to slip over to clamp down on. Now I've had to make up solid lines before in the past, uh, brake lines and, and uh, uh, vent lines and things like that and I've always wanted one of these beading tools to make these nice beads in the lines uh, in, the, in the tubes when you make them up but they're pretty expensive and I didn't really know where to find them or anything until I started working around airplanes and I knew that you could get these Parker beading tools but again they were pretty expensive somebody that uh, wouldn't use them as much as I wouldn't use them I'm not a full-time mechanic or anything uh, really can't justify the expense of these anyway I found this set in an estate sale a garage sale and I got it a hell of a buy on it. I got it for I think uh, 15 bucks or something like that. And it's in a wooden box. And of course Parker, I think somebody said there saw some place where they got them to make a new run of them. And then there's another company making some similar to these now. But uh, this is the original Parker Alliance Company, Appliance Company, Parker Appliance Company, out of Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, Parker hand beating tool set number 416. So that uh, was, a, was a heck of a find. Anyway, I took this uh, beading tool and it was it been, of course, stored in a damp place and it was got corrosion and rust on it and I cleaned it all up. Now this is not rust on it here anymore. This is uh, peralcotone or cosmoline. So I, I cleaned these all up and, and then greased them all up real good with cosmoline to store them. Now this one uh, is the one I'm using. This is for this number six tubing, which is three eighths and uh, I cleaned it all up and got all the cosmoline off of it because that cosmoline is sticky when it goes on and it, it's a grease but it's not a lubricating grease it's a preservative grease and it just sticks and so all these rollers stick and and uh, the threads stick so they don't turn freely and all of that so anyway I soaked this one real good in, uh, in uh, paint thinner um, and got it all cleaned up oiled these uh, pivot points on here and and got it up all working real nice 
and the same with this one. This one has uh, got rubber blocks in it. This is for holding the tube so it doesn't spin on you when you're when you're running the bead in it. So this kit comes with four of these frames. Um, three of them are for beading and one has rubber blocks in it to use to hold the hold the tubing to keep it from turning. But you could put the anvils and everything on this uh, frame. It's the same frame as the other three and and you can change it and put the anvils on it for the beading. Uh, but this one, ha well, it, I think you can yeah, you can take that, open that up so that you can take this uh, plug out of there and then put a bushing in it for the for the inside beading uh, anvil. So, anyway, that's the, the rubber blocks. And uh, this, this beading tool um, is for the quarter inch uh, tubing, small tubing. And I, I practiced up with it. Uh, earlier and, and put the beads on this quarter inch tubing. This is what goes uh, as a vent line be, uh, between the fuel tanks from the left wing to the, to the right wing to kind of balance them out. Anyway, I run the bead on that. Now these things uh, work just like uh, very similar to what a, a tubing cutter does. They, they got a, of course, the threaded um, shaft in here that uh, runs the, the uh, the grooved bead rollers um, up and down to adjust them and then uh, but then instead of a cutter in it you've got these rollers of course on here the rollers are on the uh, idler rollers down here instead and you've got a knife so it's kind of backwards there this has a little anvil the beading uh, tool inside tool they call it um, and that goes in a bushing these are changeable you just pull that out Oops. and then drop it on the floor pull that out, drop it on the floor to get it out of the way. Um, they look quite a bit like the punches in the uh, Whitney Jensen little punch, number five punch that I have. And, you just, and then you've got to pull that out to plunger and it uh, locks into that groove. And you can change the dies to uh, different size dies. That's number six and this is uh, number eight. Well, I'm just going to cut off this flared end on this tube here with my uh, cutting tool. I'll take a deburring tool and just deburr the inside of that hole. Get it nice and smooth. Now put a little bit of grease in the tube and around the outside of it. I just put a little bit of grease on this anvil, this inside tool. You take the tube and slide it over the inside tool down until it's flat against this uh, this bushing here and then tighten this rollers up just lightly. I've got the the rubber blocks tightened up pretty tight. Hang on to that. I've got this on there just lightly and make one spin around, tighten it up a little bit, make a few spins around. And voila, we have a bead. Now that shrinks that pulling that bead in there shrinks that tube up so that it comes away from that uh, bushing a little bit but uh, it's still a nice square nice bead and the instructions say that if you uh, are doing multiple beads and you want them all to wind up the same thing you can take these uh, these nuts here and once you get your initial bead down to the size you want it you take these nuts and turn those down uh, to the shoulder right here and lock them in and that gives you a depth adjustment to lock on there so they're all the same. Well, I've got to open that up enough to get that anvil out of there and there's a nice bead. So I think that's turning out pretty good. I'll wipe the grease off of that and uh, wipe it off the inside and give it an inspection and that looks really good. There's no cracks on there. It's a nice nice pretty bead. Uh, oh, I've practiced that a couple more times on the scrap pieces here and then we'll go do the ones on the airplane. Yeah, I got the beads in the uh, fuel lines and wing roots. There's the one for the right rear and the one for the right front. And 
there's the left side here left front left rear and then this one is for the fuel pump so those are done I uh, went ahead and finished tying down this uh, line that goes from the right fuel tank forward fuel tank uh, portion to the fuel selector valve and uh, when I looked at that other fuselage when I took it apart I noticed how hot um, everything was getting around that uh, back seat heater kit and uh, the fuel line was right above it and, and everything had got pretty hot now I might have got a little bit paranoid on that so I run this fuel line uh, on the inside on the other one it run on the outside here and then down through and then the uh, back seat heater kit comes in through here through the firewall the firewall sticks out quite a ways from this uh, mount here so anyway it was getting pretty hot in there I might have got a little bit paranoid um, first thing I did was I put a piece of uh, 3 8 inch fuel line over that um, fuel line where it go the metal fuel line where it goes down through here where it's above that valve for the back seat heater but I got to thinking about it and got to uh, worrying about it some more so I got some of this uh, real high temperature um, ceramic uh, tubing and I went ahead and cut a piece and stuck on that and then just for grins and giggles I, I went ahead and cut a piece and stuck here where that fuel line goes across the front of that firewall so that gets pretty warm there too that muffler is almost touching the firewall and it gets pretty hot there hot enough I can smell the rubber burning on my shoes when I'm flying I guess they say I might have got a little bit paranoid but just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you and uh, it's easier to do this now than after it burns up well, and it probably wouldn't burn up it but it but it might boil that fuel in that fuel line and uh, cause some problems especially when I'm running off of one tank if I'm just running off of the left tank then the fuel in the right tank just sits here in this fuel line and it it gets pretty hot in there enough to, to boil now the fumes would probably just come out of it and go up into the tank and vent off but uh, this should help it from getting so warm so my fuel lines uh, the upper portion of them are that pretty much finishes them up I went ahead and tied this line down here on this side so it doesn't rattle so much and move around it goes up through this channel and out that side the one on the left I've still got to put some shielding on it and stuff and again get it tied down but uh, that pretty much does it anyway that's the first thing I've accomplished on the airplane in a while so that uh, that's good news